is, is a very different type of crisis, and it is a reflection of a lot of things in our society that have been going on for a long time. So it's rooted in colonialism, it's rooted in poverty, it's rooted in um, social disconnection and racism and mm -hmm. other um, societal things that need to change. And it's exacerbated by the fact that we don't have a very strong uh, coordinated mental health and substance use support system. And when we declared the public health emergency, my predecessor, Dr. Yeah, Dr. Perry, Perry Kendall, Kendall yeah. um, in 2016, and, and I was part of that, and we did have regular updates, we continue to have regular updates. One of the biggest reasons for declaring an emergency across the province was to build that recognition that, that this was people, these were our community, our family, people across the province. It wasn't just the downtown east side. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that has been a big challenge because obviously it, it, people in the downtown east side have been dramatically affected mm -hmm. by this. I think it, it, it has been um, really difficult for politicians to wrap their heads around these are people um, and the whole stigma and it, it's been decades and a hundred years if you think about it in some areas of, of prohibitionist drug policy mm -hmm. that it's has led yeah. to what we are doing right now mm -hmm. and what we are experiencing right now. And that's where things like decriminalization of people who use drugs is an incredible thing. One of the things that um, has been uh, so difficult for us in public health who've been working on the toxic drug crises was seeing how things got so much worse in terms of the toxicity of the drug supply. Um, wasn't only people who in the downtown east side or in some of the other communities, but uh, we've seen now a dramatic increase in, in overdose, in toxic drug deaths in young men, 30 to 59 many of whom are at home, they have jobs, um, their families don't know that they were using or that they'd relapsed into using drugs again. Things got dramatically worse through this pandemic. We were in the downtown east side the day that uh, the decriminalization of, of people who use drugs, mm -hmm. um, that policy came into effect and I met um, a, a young woman by the name of Carrie and she is one of those people that has been asking for help. So she's not afraid to ask for help, but uh, here, here's a little bit of her story. I don't drink, I don't smoke cigarettes, I don't, I smoke pot and I take fentanyl. Yeah. I also get my I also get my medications from my doctor that I get prescribed to me, but it's not it's not quite enough once that I had that fentanyl in my system, not by choice. Like I would never I would never ever in my life would be like, Oh, I just wanna go get high on heroin or fentanyl or whatever. I, I just need a power. Um I was hit by originally I was hit by an e bike. I was just walking in the grocery store and I was hit and I Oh, I kind of like a smashed my chin up and hyperextended my arm and had a hole in my leg right here. Whoops. And, so uh, they had you on painkillers? Yeah, the, oh, major, 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 yeah. They had me on IV fentanyl. And uh, I just had a hard time stopping because I'm in pain and I'm homeless. Essentially, I don't want to take anything. Like, I just want them to fix me. I just want them to fix me. So you seeing that, you know, she's not afraid to ask for help. Um, she's, you know, homeless, she's sick, but she still has a lot of hope. So yeah. she, she wants the next year to become a poverty law advocate. That's her goal. She wants to be golfing again. She was a, a professional figure, a competitive figure skater for a number of years. So her life has changed dramatically. You see Carrie, what do you think is the help that Carrie needs now? Yeah, it, I see a whole lot of things. One, I was happy to hear that she was getting some prescribed supply from her doctor. Mm -hmm. That's a way to help balance it so that she's not exposed to the toxicity of the drugs on the street as much. Mm -hmm. So that's a good thing. You know, but th there's a whole number of things here. She talks about poverty. She talks about being homeless. Mm -hmm. So we know we, it's not just about the medical part of things. What she needs is, is a safe place to live. I think this, uh, this um, mis idea that people are using drugs to get high is is not, uh, it's not reality. It's, um, there's a whole lot of reasons why people um, like Carrie end up where she is. And we have to do, uh, we need to, to think about it in terms of housing, in terms of basic income, in terms of having a respected healthcare provider that she can have a relationship with over time. And so in your, your role, what is the one thing that, the biggest thing that you're mm -hmm. advocating for right now as we look to the toxic drug crisis? 
Um, the things that I've been working on, of course, <laughs> there's not one. Um, but uh, the, the one thing that I'm trying to uh, push more, uh, a little bit more on is um, uh, we're doing a report that will be coming out in the coming months on, on a vision for safer supply that will meet some of the needs uh, of communities across the province. So we've started in a limited way with prescribed safer supply, but it's not available in enough places. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a three-year term. Do you think we'll actually see a difference within this like pilot program? Yeah, you know what? I, 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 I cannot see us going back from this. Mm -hmm. What we need to do is ensure that it is implemented, that we, that we take that criminal justice system out of people's lives who are using drugs for whatever reason it is that they are using them, so that they have the agency and the ability to, to, to connect, to uh, meet some of these needs that people have, and to, to without um, the stigma and the shame of being labeled a criminal. Lots to think about. Uh, yes. Thank you so much, Dr. Bonnie Henry, for being with us today. I really appreciate you taking the time. Well, thank you for having me.